Hey, what's up everybody? It's your good friend Airsoftman819 here again with another episode of Retro Tech. Uh, so today's review is going to be on another uh, portable media device that I own, a uh, vintage one. This is probably the crown jewel of my portable device collection. Um, it's uh, a very rare device. It's still very sought after, not just this device, but devices made by this company. And um, this was a really nice model uh, to have, and it was a very high-end model for the time. And in a lot of ways, it's a lot more superior uh, to devices that were around the time, around at the time, such as the iPod, the uh, Arcos devices, a lot of those things. In a lot of ways, the, the creative devices were superior, and, and Creative was a very big um, audio-visual company. Uh, you know, beginning way back, I believe, in the late 80s, uh, they were very popular for making sound cards. And then later in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were very popular for making MP3 players and MP4 players and portable media devices such as this. <clears throat> and that's honestly how I would class classify this as an MP4 player or a portable media device. Very similar to the Arcos. Uh, it has a large amount of built-in storage. Um, it has a very clear digital screen in the front. Um, this individual model is not a touch screen, but this is the box. Um, I have everything taken out of it, but I figured you guys would want to see the box at least, um, considering that I have it. So this is a 30 gigabyte model. So yeah, Creative Vision W. Um, there was actually quite a few devices in the Vision line. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something caught in my throat. Um, there was the Vision, uh, the Vision M, the Vision W. Uh, you know, they made widescreen versions. They made, you know, regular screen versions. They made MP3 players. They made all different types of uh, digital devices. It's just, this, this was just higher end on that tier. Uh, this was probably one of the higher end devices. Really, the only thing you could get that really topped this was the 60 gigabyte model, which was just double the storage. It was the same model as this, just uh, more storage. So, um, before we get to the uh, device itself, we'll go over what it came with. <clears throat> we'll get the boring stuff out of the way first. Um, you have a software installation CD that comes with all the software and drivers you need to use this on a computer. Uh, but the good thing is, is you don't need this for it to work now. Uh, if you plug it into a PC now, it will recognize it and you'll be able to transfer files between it. Uh, but this has some uh, pretty useful uh, utilities on it, especially if you have an older operating system like Windows XP or Windows 7. Uh, because this device was made in 2000, 2006 and Windows XP uh, was the primary operating system. So this really won't work on a, a Windows 10 or Windows 11 device. So you have that. You have your main owner's manual. Very well detailed. Product information guide. Don't worry, you can steal this. I don't care. I don't think there's any code to steal anyway. Little advertisement for Audible, which definitely was around back then. They've been around for a long time. This is going to be a throwback. <laughs> Anybody else remember Napster? Yeah, you can definitely not use this now. For obvious reasons. Let's see what else we got here. So a little advertisement for digital entertainment. Creative Media Source is one of the um, utilities that comes on that software disk. Windows Media Player 10. That's awesome. TiVo. Where's that? There's a lot of... This came with a lot of stuff. Um, warranty information. Oh. More. Video Vault software. Interesting. And last but not least, the creative product guide, which we will now enjoy. There's the Zen Micro. Thing is tiny. Zen Nano. Muvo. 
Wow, these people made a lot of stuff. Holy crap. Maybe we'll have a good breakdown. Of... Okay, here are some of their sound cards. Really, really good sound cards. <clears throat> they had travel docks, portable speakers, all the stuff you needed. Even earphones of questionable quality, I'm sure. We have the actual MP3 players over here. Zen Vision, definitely very high on the list here. That's the original Zen Vision. But uh, Creative Man, they made a lot of really neat MP3 players in a lot of really cool and wacky colors. Really cool stuff. Always wanted a Vision M. I always really liked the Vision M. So, really neat stuff. Stuff that is equally rare and expensive to find. <laughs> Especially in good condition, anyways. So you get a pair of creative headphones. These individual ones have not been taken out of the plastic or unwrapped. And the foam is actually still in one piece on them. Surprising. You get a creative AC adapter in a very clean white color. Just a basic barrel plug with the yellow tip. And the little... U.S. adapter slides off, and I'm assuming if you bought this in a different country, it would come with your country's plug adapter. My country is obviously the United States. Okay, so we have that. Our USB 2.0 transfer cable. Nice, long, shielded USB 2. Mini USB. It's a standard that uh, people... In their late 20s, early 30s, like myself, will recognize, but maybe some other people might not. This was the standard that was popular before micro USB took over. And on, arguably, this was a better connector. The, these mini USBs did not wear out half as quickly as micro. So you have a 3.5 millimeter AV cable to connect the uh, Zen Vision to your television. Really nice um, AV cable. Gold-plated connections. Really nice cables that come with this. So here is the player itself, and it is in a nice felt bag to keep it safe. So we'll go ahead and take it out and look at it. The thing everyone's been waiting for. The Zen Vision W by Creative. This thing is one of the nicest portable media devices I own. I was lucky enough to get this one brand new in box from a pawn shop, so I did not pay collector price for it, naturally coming from a pawn shop, so I really lucked out there. Just a really nice, elegant device. <clears throat> Isn't too dated, really, by appearance. Doesn't look that bad. It's not terribly huge. Um, if I would have thought about it, I would have brought an Arcos out here to compare it with, but maybe I'll do like a whole comparison video between this and the other portable media devices I've reviewed. So uh, to get things started, um, most of the construction of this is plastic. Um, this light silver bezel here and this dark silver back here, this dark gray, uh, this is all plastic, but this black uh, face plate um, and your screen bezel, this whole black piece right here is metal, aluminum I'm assuming. You've got your creative logo there. On the back, you do have your battery. It is a detachable battery. Um, to release it, you press this metal button right here. I don't like taking the battery off of this very often because finding this battery, replacing it, is extremely difficult to do and expensive, and there's not a lot of these old batteries out there. And this one, unfortunately, has swollen just a hair bit. It still holds the charge and everything just fine, but it doesn't like to come off. The device because it's just so slightly swollen there we go got that off safely so there's the battery very thin you can see it's just barely starting to bulge just a hair bit you can just barely tell it's just enough to make it not want to go on to the back of the device because not only is this the battery it sort of makes up the back of the device as you can see it makes up for a big chunk of the device 
So it, it makes it difficult to remove and, and, and replace. And it makes finding replacements now just almost impossible. If you find one of these, you're going to be spending well over $100 just for this little battery, just because it has the Zen logo on it. And it's got the specific vision finish and everything. So basically, you line it up kind of like an old cell phone battery and then just slide it on and it should snap right into place. But you have to make sure your, the tabs on either side are both aligned. And this is, this is the part on this battery that doesn't like to line up. There we go. So we'll go ahead and snap that back on and just leave that. That'll probably be the last time that ever comes off of there. Uh, this button right here that you press to, to slide off the battery, that's metal as well. The buttons on this are metal. On the top, you have your volume up and down. Also metal buttons, nice and clicky, nice and responsive. You have a microphone up here for voice recordings. You have your power switch slash lock, slash lock button. Slide it over here to lock the device, slide it all the way to the power position to turn it on, but we're not going to do that just yet. You can see that battery, what I'm talking about. It <laughs> it fits, but it doesn't want to fit. Um, it's not a good situation, but it's still working and still holds a nice charge, So and it hasn't exploded, so that's good. Over here on the right side, you have your headphone jack, and underneath this little rubber flap... You have your AV out, which is separate from your headphone jack, which is awesome because on the later Arcos devices, they combine the AV and the headphone into one, whereas in this case, they're separate, which is cool. Uh, and this is where you would plug your AC adapter in to charge. So all that's still in good shape as well, naturally. So. On the bottom, we have a docking port. They did have a docking station you could dock this to. Um, I believe, I think it was mostly for like speaker docks and stuff like that, but I think you might be able to transfer data through that as well or video. Um, but I don't have any devices that interface with this plug. Uh, you have your main USB 2.0 transfer port. Uh, this is not for charging. This is just for transferring data. So by plugging this into a USB on your computer, it will not charge it. If you want to charge it, you're going to have to plug it in over here with the included um, AC adapter, which is a little different than modern devices that carry data and power over one cable. Back in these days, they did that, but it wasn't as common. It was a lot more common to have a separate cable for power and a separate cable for data, and this does that. I'm going to wipe these fingerprints off the screen because they are driving me nuts. I know they're probably driving you guys crazy too. Okay, much better, much better. Screen is glass, by the way glass screen and I just smudged it even more you have an IR sensor up here your front panel buttons you have a back button a menu button your directional buttons here your directional pad you have your okay selector in the middle you have play and skip down here and you have your main speaker here at the bottom and over here on the left side last but not least is your compact flash expansion card port which you can use complex. Uh, I haven't been able to talk tonight, if you guys haven't noticed. Compact flash cards. So you can load data onto a compact flash and transfer it onto the Vision W using one of these. Just stick it in here, kind of like a game cartridge. There we go. Plugs right in. Obviously, you won't want to leave it there if you're trying to hold this, but it's for data transfer mostly. So I'm pull that out. So we'll go ahead and power on the device and show you guys a little bit of the operating system. Uh, it's not super complicated. It's mostly text-based, but uh, we'll fire it up. Buttons light up. Buttons are backlit. At least the clear buttons are. The ones up here and the ones down here. And your power button is illuminated as well up top blue. Yeah, you can see that a lot better. Very nice, clear screen. I like glossy screens. Okay. I'm glad that actually wasn't playing because that would have been copyright hell. Okay, so you basically, like I said, it's text-based. So this is your menu. Uh, there is no, like, icons or anything like that. It's a very simple text-based operating system. So uh, you have your music library, your photos, your videos, your FM radio, uh, which you have to have headphones plugged in to use uh, because the it relies on those for the antenna. You have your microphone for voice recordings, extras, which is like your system information. Okay, uh, your hard drive information, your organizer and uh, date and time. Your system information. 
tells you how many photos and videos you have. Very easy to navigate device too. You have your audio settings, all of your different display settings. So all your settings are here. It's just all text-based menus. And then you have your, the option to uh, transfer from your compact flash. So you can browse the files you've already imported or you can copy what's from the compact flash card. So you can see we're reading full battery. So the battery does hold a charge despite the fact it's kind of swollen. So I don't have a lot I can show on here due to copyright reasons, but I'll see what videos I have that I might be allowed to show. Okay. Here we go. Good speaker. I think that's full volume. Yeah. I really hope I'm allowed to show this. One thing I like about this device is the speaker is quite a bit louder than the Arcos devices. Okay. I can only handle so much of that at once. So that's video. Obviously, you know, music is going to be pretty straightforward. Once again, I don't have anything on here I can show you legally, but we already heard the sound with that video. So there's not a lot to test on here. Very basic uh, uh, menu. But if you want to bring up your settings, um, you can bring up default menu, which I think is this. Okay, we'll sort of default, see what that looks like. Okay, it, it's exactly this. Okay, so this has been my review of the Zen Vision W um, MP3 player or MP4 player. Um, so given my experience with this, it uses, and it's one of the only devices I own or have owned that uses what's called a mini ZIF hard drive, which are notoriously slow and notoriously prone to failure. Uh, but honestly, uh, given the resolution of this little screen, this is either, uh, I think, like a five and a half inch screen. And it, the resolution is 480 by 272. Um, that's even with video. So, and it supports 30 frames per second. So video coded in that resolution running at 30 frames per second um, actually looks and performs pretty well on here. And uh, the sound being so much better... Um, and this being such a small, easy to use device in a lot of ways makes it a lot more practical than other devices at the time, like the iPods, uh, the Arcos 605, the Arcos uh, 604, 404, all those devices. In a lot of ways, I like this better. It feels more refined. Um, even though there's a lot more plastic on it, it still manages to be just as heavy, if not more heavy than the Arcos. Uh, so it feels like there's a lot more going on. Uh, the controls are just fantastic. It, it honestly kind of reminds me of an old phone and how it controls. It's, it's very good as far as the control-wise. Uh, you have an array of ports. Uh, you have a memory card. Even though this has a built-in hard drive, you still have a memory card slot, which a lot of Arcos devices didn't have. Um, and I don't think iPods ever had. Uh, you know, it's just a really good device, and it can do quite a bit. And uh, it looks very good while doing it. And everything that it does, it does well. It plays music well. It plays portable video well. Um, and those are really the only two things you need to do with this. This has no Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, it's basically just a portable hard drive to store all of your music and videos on. And you can access them at any time while on the go. And obviously when you get to your destination, you can hook this thing up to a computer and access all your video and music files there uh, and you can also store pictures on here as well so it has uh, quite a bit of different uses as far as what it can be used for um i might have some pictures in here uh sure let's go nature so you can keep photos on here video uh, and it's just, it's a great portable companion, even in 2022. I think these devices still have a purpose because they're not wired into our modern grid. They don't need mo cellular, cellular data and they don't need Wi-Fi to work. You load them with your movies and your music and they just work. All you have to worry about is keeping it charged and not dropping it and wrecking the priceless 
impossible to find hard drive that's inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Zen Vision W. And uh, stay tuned for more videos from the Airsoft Man 819 channel because y'all, I cannot guarantee I'm going to keep doing this. So stay tuned while you can. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later.